Have you ever had one of something, you know, one thing that was super important to you? Like I had one wedding ring. So when it got lost in the ocean, it was a big deal. Sometimes one thing is so important, you'll stop at nothing to find it. Jesus tells some stories about it in Luke 15. So stick around to the end of this video and we're going to give you some ideas on how to find your one. So this is my original wedding ring. Not on my finger, as you can plainly see. Mostly that's because it doesn't fit anymore. That's a story for another day. This ring, super important to me. Katie had a verse engraved on the inside of this ring. It's an important symbol of the covenant we made when we got married. I would and have stopped at nothing to find it. So Jesus talks about precious ones, singulars. That means so much we do whatever has to be done to find them when they're lost. So let's take a look at Luke 15. Jesus liked to tell stories to make important truths a, a little easier to understand. And that's what he's doing here. You may have heard them referred to as parables, just stories, stories that Jesus told to help an important concept or our truth hit home in a way that was just a little bit more understandable. So let's break it down. Luke 15 verses one through seven. Tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. So Jesus tells them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. See, shepherds generally had to make sure that sheep didn't do themselves in. Sheep are some of the dumbest animals on the planet. Without someone paying attention, they would literally, literally walk off a cliff, circle for hours, forget how to eat. They just need guidance and they were worth a lot in biblical times. You might have a, a bunch, but if one got lost, it was definitely important to go after it. It was like currency, it was like money. See, it's not exactly a transferable idea, but if you've ever left your phone somewhere and realized it was missing, what did you do? You definitely immediately retraced all your steps, called whoever you had to call, including your phone, and started looking for it. Valuable. You wanna hold on to it. So right after that, Jesus talks about a lady who lost actually some money. It didn't go far. It was just lost in her house, probably like the TV remote, but it was enough money that she searched until she found it. And just like the shepherd, when she did find it, there was some excitement, some celebration going on. And then to round out story time, Jesus talks about a lost son. You may have heard him referred to as the prodigal son. There's a lot to unpack there, but you should definitely read it. It's all in Luke 15 verses 11, probably to the end. So long story short, a kid gets mouthy and greedy with his dad. He takes his inheritance before his dad's even dead. And then he goes out and he blows it. So think about it. If you had a fat stack of cash and you weren't really leaning into responsibility, what would you do with it? He blew it. And we see the dad pretty devastated by that. Not because the kid wasted the money just because the kid was lost. He was confused, he was searching in all the wrong places and the dad just wanted him to come home. And he eventually does come home, but that's a story for another day. So dad sets up shop in the driveway and he just watches, searches for this one precious kid to get himself together and come home. So what's common about all these stories? I mean, besides the fact that someone got lost, I'm so glad 
you asked. First, there were multiples of these things to begin with. But all the things were important enough that even when one of them got lost, someone was on the hunt. Someone was on the search to find them. A hundred sheep minus one didn't equal 99 sheep to the shepherd. It equaled one lost sheep. 10 coins minus one that was lost, that equaled one lost coin, not nine coins. Two kids, one of them rogue, one too many missing. We gotta go find that one. So think about all the people that you know and love, or even just like pretty well. We all probably have enough friends and family that if one disappeared, it really wouldn't be like there weren't enough to take their place, especially those younger siblings, right? But what would we do? We wouldn't do that. No, we would probably at least start looking. We'd wanna focus on the one that disappeared until we were all back together again. Another commonality, the search was intentional. Each person made a decided effort to focus on and find the one missing thing, sheep, coin, son. They weren't just sitting around hoping for the best. Now, some might say the dad didn't actually go out searching for his kid, but in actuality, what his search was was just as significant. He staked out where he thought his kid might return to so he wouldn't miss it when his son came back. And in order to do that, he had to give up all his other duties. He let someone else run his business and he just waited daylight to dark. So even though it doesn't say he was driving the highways looking for his kid, he was definitely making an intentional effort to find him. Another similarity, the searchers did not give up until the lost one was acquired. Now that makes sense with the dad, but, but think about the other two. Eventually, if you couldn't find the coin, you might just say, well, pfft, that was an expensive lesson learned and you just go with the nine coins you had left. And come on, sheep, I'm not even sure I'd notice if I was down one of a hundred. But the folks in this story did not give up no matter how many of the thing they still had until that one thing was found. Ones matter. They're important. No matter how many of them you have. So here's a question to think about. Of all your friends and all your family and all the people you know, who's the one who might need to know Jesus? In your sphere of influence, who, who needs to know your faith story? Who needs an invitation to church? Who needs someone to pray with them? Who needs to be found? What's your role in searching for them? Be a bringer. Search for your one. And if you aren't sure how to even start, we got a free resource that might help guide you in your conversations as you invest in your one and help them find their way to faith. Hey, what's up friends? My name is Nick. So excited to have you join us for this video. And uh, we just wanna let you know that we are a local church in the DFW Dallas-Fort Worth area. And if you're local to here and you're in sixth grade through 12th grade, we would love to invite you to come check us out Wednesday night in person or Sunday mornings. But if you're not, or if you're just not ready to do that, we also wanna let you know that we love interacting with you here online. So whether it's these long form videos or some of our YouTube shorts or hang out with us over on TikTok or Instagram, we are hoping to provide inspirational, creative, fun, silly content every single day, uh, ultimately all with the aim of helping you take meaningful next steps in your faith to Jesus. If there's any way and anything, any prayer that we can offer for you as a pastor, uh, we would love to invite you to do that. Hit us up in the DMs or shoot us a message some way, somehow. Until next time, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching this video. We're excited to be with you.